in talking about spiritual sight, one of the things that I get asked a lot is how do we actually see? What does that look like? Are we really seeing or are we seeing just in our imagination? Does it almost feel like you're making it up as it happens? Uh, there are a lot of different ways that people see into the spirit, and all of them are important, in my opinion. As you first learn about seeing in the spirit, many times people will use their imagination on purpose. The sanctified imagination is a gift from God to develop uh, our capacity for the things of the spirit realm. It's, it's like a bridge, if you will, from the natural to the, to the spiritual realm. Many times people think they're making up things that are actually happening. They see them in the imagination, but they see them very faintly. So they think, well, possibly I'm making that up. The Lord will often give people confirmations. Uh, you might think that you see something in church. You, you see a manifestation of some kind, an angel bringing in a bowl or something. And then uh, possibly later on uh, afterwards, someone comes and says, you know, I saw an angel bringing in a bowl. So the Lord gives us confirmations for the things we're experiencing very often to let us know the reality of what's going on. But how real does it get? How real does it get? Does it does it get to the point where it seems almost natural? Well, the reality is that the spiritual realm supersedes the natural realm. The natural realm was created out of the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is the more tangible, the more real realm, if you will. So, no, the, the things of the spirit don't approximate the things of the natural. They actually go beyond that. Uh, many times as you learn to walk in the spirit and, and uh, enter into the things of the spiritual dimension, those things will go beyond what you've experienced even in the natural. I say that... Being in the spiritual realm or even seeing in the spiritual realm is like reality times 10. It's like the natural realm plus. So you have great clarity. You have great understanding. You have uh, great uh, awareness as you're in the spiritual realm, as you're seeing in the spiritual realm. So, so why do I compare those things as being one and the same, seeing and being in the spiritual realm? Because seeing in the spirit is not like turning on a television set. I've said this in other videos, but is more like stepping through a doorway. Once your spiritual eyes are open, you're not watching uh, scenes at, on a wall or paintings on a wall. You're actually seeing the interaction of the spiritual realm in your life and around you. So it's it's more interactive and and allows us to move in that realm as the Holy Spirit directs us. But how real does it get? Yes, we see things in our imagination, and that's something that we need to develop on purpose. You know, people, a lot of times people get the idea that, well, if God wanted us to see, he would just open our eyes. I, I contend that if God wanted you to see, he would give you spiritual eyes and maybe even put something in the scriptures like, blessed are your eyes for they see, or I counsel you to buy eye salve for your eyes that you might see. Uh, but wait, he did put that in the scripture, <laughs> didn't, didn't he? So I contend and I, and I just put to you that I believe God wants us to see, but it's a choice that we make. Uh, Sometimes people get the idea, just like with signs and wonders, if they kind of mildly disdain the things of the Spirit, somehow it makes them more spiritual or more holy. And no, I don't need that stuff, brother. I don't need to see in the Spirit. I already believe. Well, here's a news flash. I already believe too, but I'm not going to close my spiritual eyes just because I believe. I don't think it makes you more holy. It doesn't make you more knowledgeable. It doesn't make you better able to serve the Lord if your spiritual eyes are closed. So we really need to have an understanding about these things. I'm just going to say it. 
It's a sense of spiritual pride that we don't need the things that God has given us. Just like with signs and wonders, a lot of people say, well, I don't need that stuff. That's foolishness. Let me explain something. If the Holy Spirit thinks it's important enough to do or to give you, it is foolishness to call that foolishness. We really need to just say, Lord, whatever you say goes. You get to be the boss, not me. If you want to put pour out signs and wonders in my home and in my life, Lord, just give me, please give me understanding as you do. We don't disdain those things, just like we don't disdain spiritual sight. The Bible says to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Now, whether you consider this a gift or not, I believe everything good is a gift from God. So I'm just trying to encourage you to desire to see into the things of the Spirit. And as you do, understanding comes and you then you begin to want realize why God would even open your eyes. You see the benefits. You see that you're better able to pray for people. You see situations unfold. You become like the sons of Issachar where you, where you know the times and the seasons because these things are open to you. Uh, and you're not wandering around just like, you know, uh, if you were without natural sight. You might need someone to lead you around. It's the same with spiritual sight. Let's get our eyes open. But anyway, I digress. That's one of my rabbit trails. So what does it look like? Yes, your imagination. You see things in your imagination. Sometimes it, it takes uh, uh, on a, a dreamlike state. Many times we see things in the spirit during our dreams because it's a time when we're not distracted. God can speak to us. Many times we're so busy during the course of our day that we don't really pay attention to what the Lord's saying or trying to show us. So he'll give us visions in the night, dreams, visions, uh, visitations even that seem very dreamlike. But uh, until awareness begins to be cultivated, it all seems very dreamlike. It all seems like, you know, it could be an overactive imagination or I'm making it up. Is this really even real? But if you are pursuing the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saying, Lord, everything you have, I am willing. I'm willing to walk in it. I'm willing to do it. You give me direction. Then these things begin to unfold for you. Now, um, spending time cultivating your spiritual sight, exercising your spiritual sight. What does that look like? Well, um, as you're desiring for your eyes to see, you actually have to make the, the declaration, even to yourself, give yourself a permission that, yes, when I go to sleep, I, Lord, give me dreams and visions. So so you will see things in your dreams. What, what, can, it, does, what can that look like? Does it seem, uh, does it get more real as you go? And the answer is yes. Many times visions will appear before you and it looks just like a movie. Like you're literally watching a movie on a big screen and you have that same level of awareness that you see everything unfold before you. It's not dreamlike. You, you, re you realize you're not making any of it up because you hadn't even been thinking in that direction. So the Lord will unfold visions before you and maybe show you things to come or things about your life or things that you need to do. Uh, the same with... Um, having visitations. Many times you see in the spirit. Now, for instance, I was sitting in my prayer chair and with my physical eyes open and my spiritual eyes, I saw like a giant TV screen appear before me. Now in the TV screen, I saw something going on. So it was like a vision within a vision. I was seeing this TV screen as if it was uh, right in front of me, and I and it was in the spiritual dimension, but it looked like a real TV in the natural. And then, of course, then the vision unfolded within the context of the TV screen. So there are many different ways that we can see. Sometimes when your spiritual eyes are open or they begin to open, you experience more than you even think that you do. So you're desiring to see the angels around your life know it. The Lord has given them a mandate to watch over you, to help you to grow in the things of the Spirit. What, 
Why would angels do that? They've been given charge over you. They're going to help you uh, fulfill the call of God on your life. What, what would they be there for if not? I mean, of course, they protect you and do other things. They bring provision. Uh, they come before the throne for you on your behalf. So uh, many times you will actually see angels that look like physical human beings. And most of the time, it goes right past us. You know, the Bible says to be careful lest you entertain angels unaware. And, um, you know, I believe we need to be aware. We need to cultivate an awareness of the reality of the spiritual realm and the spiritual dimension in our lives. Be led of the spirit, not led of the flesh, not led of the soul, but be led of the spirit so that these things become more and more normal. So, um, in addition to that, uh, sometimes you see uh, angels uh, as spiritual beings that look kind of real, but uh, they're out in front of you, just like standing in the room. You see them uh, much like you would see a see-through person, or sometimes they're glowing. Sometimes uh, you, you see you know, armor, and it's uh, incredible. It looks many times like you're seeing in the natural. And a lot of times people say, did you really see the angel or, or was it in your imagination? Or did you really see the angel or was it in the spirit? No, the, the reality is that as your eyes open, you begin to see and it looks like you're seeing with your physical eyes. But you have to realize you're seeing a spiritual phenomenon. I believe that we're seeing with our spiritual eyes, but it's cultivated to the point where you can see openly as if it looks physical. If that makes sense to you. The, re the reason I believe this is because many times my wife and I have seen things together that other people around us could not see. So if we were seeing with our physical eyes, then everyone with physical eyes would probably be able to see the same thing. Now, we saw my wife and I uh, were going to a conference once in Pennsylvania, and we decided, what are we going to do for this long drive? It was like a nine-hour drive. And so we decided we'll pray in agreement in tongues. And so after about five hours, we, we uh, stopped to get coffee, and uh, we walked into the convenience store and went back by the bathrooms, and there were uh, two girls and a guy waiting to use the bathroom. The guy went in first, and then after he came out, the two girls went in. Well, uh, one of the girls came out, and so my wife started to go in, and I said, no, wait, wait for the other girl to come out. And she goes, oh, yeah, the, the blonde hasn't come out yet. And the girl, turned, the girl, the dark-haired girl that had just left the bathroom said, what are you talking about? I was in there by myself. And then we realized at that moment that we were seeing in the spirit just as if it was physical. So sometimes you see with that kind of clarity in the spiritual realm. But what kind of things do you see? Well, you know, at first, when my spiritual eyes first began to open, it kind of threw me because I would see a lot of things that I didn't have understanding about. I would see shapes floating through the house or boxes or furniture that appeared in the house that we didn't have in the natural in our house. Or I would see numbers floating or I would see scriptures or my wife very often sees names written across the sky. And uh, especially after reading Daniel chapter 10, she began to experience that. And so these are the types of things you see also. Many times when your spiritual eyes open, you will see other people that also, uh, like Enoch or Elijah, move in the spirit. Now, there are also people from the other side, from, from New Age practices, that they see in the spirit, they move in the spirit, and they think it's very odd to hear about Christians that can see in the spirit, uh, because most Christians don't even have a grid for seeing in the spiritual realm. I mean, the scriptures tell us, blessed are your eyes for your see, but, you know, for years we explained that away as just, well, it means to understand, you know, stuff around you, understand the scriptures. So uh, many times you will see people of the new age that in the spiritual realm, 
Sometimes uh, I've seen demonic entities. I've seen uh, things that are holding people, things that are like chains on people, and uh, or fog or a mist surrounding people in the spirit. Uh, basically seeing their spiritual state because I can see what's going on in the spirit around them. And uh, so these are all things that I think the Lord allows us to see to direct us better how to pray for people. But yes, it does get very real. Uh, the more that you cultivate awareness of the spiritual realm, the more that your eyes begin to open and you begin to see what's going on. I've seen uh, you know, people in the spirit get right up in my face and uh, try and afflict me or curse me or uh, do some kind of unnatural or unclean thing against me, uh, directed, you know, of course, by the demonic realm. And uh, ha having the ability to see, it helps me to deal with these things as I encounter them. You know, I was telling a uh, testimony once about seeing this giant spider. It was like a three or four foot wide spider that was on the wall in our basement. And you know, people get the idea that, uh, well, you know, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that stuff because, you know, I don't, uh, your life is not typical. Normal people don't have to deal with that. Uh, can, I, can I give you a wake-up call? The Bible says our battle is not flesh and blood for all of us. It doesn't say only for those that see that you're engaging in this battle. The reality is, you know, I saw this spider and I rebuked it and drove it out of the house. But what had happened, what would have happened if I hadn't seen it? Possibly I would have had nightmares or one of the kids would have had nightmares or, or some kind of temptation would have come upon me. I don't know. But the reality is because I could see it, I was able to deal with it. That's kind of a commercial as, as to why you need to see or why you should desire to see. Don't desire to be spiritually blind. But yes, it gets very real. So uh, on our prayer walks, when we go around the neighborhood, sometimes we'll see lightning flashing through the trees or across the sky or through the neighborhood. Or we'll see uh, angels, uh, you know, filling the sky or, or moving along with us as we go on our walks, our prayer walks. Uh, a lot of times we've also seen uh, demonic stuff. My wife and my daughter were walking around our neighborhood once and they saw this uh, witch-like creature uh, hanging in the air about 20 feet in the air above the street as they walked and they just they rebuked it and kept on going and, and, and drove it away but so yeah you see things a lot of things that you might not have understanding about but uh, but it gets very real tangibly real tangibly real to the point where you can reach out and touch the angel, shake the angel's hand, or the, if the Lord appears to you, that you can literally feel his embrace. And why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want to feel the arms of the Lord around you? Uh, so, yes, it does get real. It seems to have a, at least in my uh, experience, it's almost like a graduated effect as the Lord leads us along this path and gives us more understanding and more awareness about what's going on. But um, like I said early on, I, I didn't have much understanding, but I was having a lot of experiences and I spoke against that. I said, Lord, I shouldn't, I don't even need to see if I don't know what's going on. That complaint closed my eyes for about two years, almost completely. And it really taught me a lesson. Do not speak against anything that the Lord is doing. Just if you need to ask for greater clarity and understanding because as God shows you things he will give you understanding just uh, have the humility to say Lord I don't understand but I'm willing you know I'm willing to just listen to your voice and you give me understanding as I need it I'm okay with that but it does get real it gets it gets tangibly real where where uh, the, the miracles of God will be manifest around you in the natural. You will reach into the spiritual and pull out miracles into the natural realm, of course, as the Lord directs you. So don't disdain seeing. Don't disdain the signs and wonders of God. Don't disdain the angels around your life. 
Don't get that attitude like, you know, well, I don't need angels. I just need the Lord. The Lord created the angels and gave them a place in your life. So let, let's try to have a normal, healthy appreciation for everything that God's doing. And it's exciting. Can I just tell you that? That it's exciting. It's like having, um, it's like having uh, super friends, you know, like uh, uh, superhero friends. And, you know, I realize we, are, you know, we also moving in the power of God are should be like that amongst each other, that we value each other in that way. But having angels around your life and being able to see them and interact with them that they bring you a scripture to read. It is exhilarating. You know, it's great to have an impression. I think I'm supposed to read uh, First John. But when, uh, you know, a heavenly emissary shows up and says, to you are supposed to read, the Lord says, read First John. It gives it a weight that it didn't have before. Can I just be honest and tell you that? So, yes, it gets real. I'm going to, share more testimonies about how real it gets coming up. I'm going to, I'm going to go through and talk about some visitations from angels and from, uh, and some warfare and some, uh, visitations that the Lord has given me in heavenly places and, and provision and all these things, uh, coming up. But, um, don't get, don't get the idea that seeing in the spirit realm is always like you're making it up in your mind. You will move past that. Yes, develop that, but even in that, it becomes so real that you know that it is real. You're seeing in your imagination. It becomes more real. It's It might, might be faint now, and you think, you know, is this real or is this not? But God will bring a greater clarity even to that, and as he helps you to develop your eyes to see in greater capacity and in greater ways. So I hope this has helped you in some uh, regard and some respect, and uh, I hope to make uh, more videos and uh, hopefully give some more explanation about all these things. So God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.